In any programming language, we need some way to control the flow of the program with conditional statements, loops, and so forth. So let's see some examples of that in C. It looks like I didn't name the file right, so let me fix that real quick. And there's my syntax highlighting. So let's declare some variables. So when I declare a variable in C, I can initialize it immediately. I can also declare multiple variables on the same line. Now, in this case, these two variables are declared, but I haven't initialized them, so their value is undetermined at this point. We'll prompt the user to enter an integer. And we'll store that integer in B. So the first control structure that we're going to see would be a conditional structure and if else statement. So we'll say if A is less than B. We're going to print that A is less than B, and we'll fill in those values. And just to be clear, we'll say we'll put the variable name in the control sequence. Else, we're going to print that Actually, we'll just copy this line and we'll say A is not less. So we can compile that. And we have an unused variable. Typically, we want to always try to get rid of the warnings. Usually, there's something important. In this case, this would be important, except that we're not using. I, I yet. So we'll ignore that warning for now, but typically we won't ignore warnings. So I'll enter an integer three and five is not less than three. If I run it again with 10, it'll say five is less than 10. I can also have a case statement, which in C would be switch. So I'll switch on B. And the first case is if B is one, And I'll do this several times. So I'm going to copy this. We'll do two, three, four, and five. And we have six, so we'll do that one. Okay, so we copied it six times, or five times, so we'll do one for each. And then I need to change these to the correct word. Now, if I leave this as is, let's print a three. You'll notice it says you printed a three, four, five, or six. 
And what's happening is, is once it matches a case, it runs all the code through the rest of the switch statement. So in order to stop that, I'm going to put a break at, after each print before the next case starts. And then my default case, which you always want to add just in case, or just so you're, you're sure you're handling everything, even, and that's going to be used when no other cases match. And we'll just say you entered a number. And we don't need the break there because that's the end of the switch statement. Let's make this a little bigger so that we can see the whole thing. So there are times where if you match a case, you, you may want it to still fall through to the, the next case. And that's certainly acceptable. In this case, of course, all of these are independent cases, so we don't want them to fall through. So we have a break after each one. So now when we run this, if we enter three, it says you entered a three. And if we enter 11, it says you entered a number. So in addition to conditionals, we'll also often want to have loops. So the first loop that we're going to see is a while loop. We're going to initialize ii to be zero. And the reason I use the ii here is you could use just i or x or something. But I find that if you use short loops variables like that, it's hard to find something. So for a generic loop counter, you know, for loop or something like that, I'll always use ii. That just makes it easier to search for it. It's a lot easier to find ii than a single i because that matches in printf and, and a lot of other strings. So I'm going to say while ii is less than or equal to b. I'm going to print f. I'll say your number is equal to some number. The loop variable is equal to some integer. And your number is going to be b. And the loop variable is ii. And as I go through the loop, I'm going to add 2 to ii each time. Why? Just because. That's what I decided to do. I could do whatever I want. The key is, though, I want to make sure I change that loop variable every time through the loop. Because if I don't, it's going to get stuck. I'll have an infinite loop. Related to the while loop is the do while loop. And a do while loop is different. It's like a while loop, but the body is always executed at least once. And we'll put something in the parentheses, and at the end of the parentheses, we'll say while i i i is greater than zero. And in the loop, we'll say printf and we'll do the same thing we did above. But in this case, we'll decrement i i by two. And then my final type of loop is a for loop. Now, one note here is that in ANSI C, the variable must be declared first. So you can't say for int kk equals zero because we haven't declared kk. We have declared ii, and we also could just say int ii to declare a local scope loop variable in C99 or later. So we'll say ii equals zero. 
and I, we're going to loop until I, I, or while I, I is less than B. And we're going to increment I, I at each iteration. And we're just going to print the loop variable there. And let's say in each of these statements what loop we're in. And let's put a print statement to get a new line in between as well. It's always a good habit to get into because otherwise you might run into a case where your output isn't clear. Okay, so let's compile that. Notice we don't have that warning anymore because now we're using II. And we'll enter 3 again. And so you'll see that the loop variable goes through. We increment it, then we decrement it, and then here's our for loop. And you'll notice my output is messy up here, so let's put another printf statement up at the top. In fact, why don't we say this? And now that we've done that, this becomes irrelevant, so we can delete that. I'm just changing up some of the orders as well, just to make the code clearer. I think it's better to have the comment and then all the code related to that comment beneath it. So since the print statement now is related to the comment, I think everything is seeked up now. It looks the same, so let's run this. So notice there, since my variable is larger, get a lot more output. So a couple things that we also want to see or a couple other things that we want to see uh, is the break statement. And the break statement It X's the current loop iteration or the current loop. So let's create an infinite loop. Now, if I run this as is, this is just going to run forever. But I'm going to put an if statement in here. And if A is greater than 100, in my else statement, I'm going to increment A. So even though this seems like an infinite loop, I'm incrementing A each time. And once A is greater than 100, I'm going to break out of the loop. So I have an empty line there that I want to get rid of. And then let's run this, run this program. So you see that eventually it does break. And just to show you, we'll print the value. And you see once A is 101, it's greater than 100, so it breaks. Another 
control statement we can use is the continue statement. And that skips the rest, or skips to the next iteration. So let's suppose we have a for loop. And here I'm declaring the loop variable end loop since we're using C11. We can do that. So if, if I take j, j, and modulo it by 3, if that's not equal to 0, then j, j is not a multiple of 3. So I'm going to continue. And then I'm going to print the value of j, or jj. So you may think that, yeah, I, don't, I haven't intended this as much as I want. I'll fix that in a moment. This may seem odd, the structure, but what I'm doing is I'm saying, I am doing this loop from zero to B and if each of those integers from zero to B, if they're a multiple of, if they're not a multiple of three, then I'm going to continue. I'm going to skip this, but if they are, I'm going to continue. And so, or I'm going to, if they are, I'm going to go through the continue. If they are a multiple of three, this condition never gets met. So then I print, I hit this print statement and it'll print the value. So this will print the multiples of three that are less than or equal to B. So let's say 12. And notice this prints the variable 0, 3, 6, 9, and 12, which are the multiples of three bet between 0 and 12 inclusive. And once again, we want a print statement so that we can get a new line there. So break and continue are somewhat controversial. You'll sometimes see them referred to as equivalent to a go-to statement, which everybody knows is supposedly bad. Ultimately, at the assembly level, any kind of loop is doing a jump. So as long as you're careful with your, with your breaks and continues, you can sometimes use them to simplify the code. You don't have to deal with for example, keeping a flag around that, okay, once this Boolean is true, then exit the loop. You can just check that condition. And instead of setting the flag, just say, oh, I'm done, and then break out. So use these sparingly, but if you have a good reason to use them, then feel free to do so. And I'll reformat this a little bit before I upload it.